What's up guys? Welcome to Kaliri TV. So today, we will be making homemade bacon and cheese pizza. So, let's go! First, we will be preparing our equipment. Number one, clean hands. Of course, do wash your hands before doing food related. Okay? The next one would be your rolling pin. So this is not required if you have an old bottle that would do. Next one would be a dough cutter. Uh, I'm not sure if knife can be used, but if you don't have dough cutter, make use of anything in your kitchen just to cut the dough. Spatula for scraping the excess dough. Then your rolling mat. This is not required. You can do, do it on your table. Just make sure your table is clean. Of course, your tray. Um, we don't have any baking uh, or pizza pan. So we'll just use normal pan and uh, make a rectangular shape pizza. Last but not the least, our mixer. If you can do it by hand, if you don't have a mixer, you can do it by hand, but I tried it before. <laughs> so, of course, your attachment should be a dome hook. Make sure you use this one, not the whisk, not the mixer, or spatula, I don't know what is it called, but use the hook, okay? Then the bowl attack. So this comes as I said. So let's go prepare the ingredients. For the ingredients, we will be needing 420 grams of all-purpose flour, then one and one fourth cups water. This should be warm, uh, around 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you're not sure. As long as you will not get burned, that's okay. It's just warm. Okay, that's for the water. Then next would be our honey. Uh, we will be needing half teaspoon. Sorry, that's one teaspoon. One teaspoon of honey. Next would be half tablespoon of salt. Then half teaspoon of yeast I think this is instant yeast not the active, I don't know how to use that so let's just use um, instant instant yeast okay, so we will mix this up and so first uh, we will put our salt into the warm water so, I'll just use my hands to make sure your hands are clean. Okay, after that, uh, let's get the one teaspoon of honey. That should be fine. Then mix it all up. Make sure no honey will be left on your teaspoon. So mix it all up until the honey is dissolved. So once the honey is dissolved, uh, we would mix uh, or we'll just put actually, we we'll just need to put the yeast. Just let it um, float on top and we'll be waiting for 10 minutes. So 
So, see you back after 10 minutes. So, we're almost 10 minutes and as you can see on our yeast, it's already bubbling up. So, that's what we want to see. So, then mix it up. Mix it all up, make sure there's no more um, bub bubbling up happening on top. So, okay, I think that's good. So, before mi mixing your wet ingredients or your liquid ingredients to your flour, if you flour, uh, make sure to put a hole in the middle using your spatula. So, a hole in the middle of the flour. Okay. Then, after that, gently pour your liquid liquid mixture. Okay. So, let's go to the mixer. Let's go to the mixer. So guys, again, we'll use the hook attachment, the dough mixer. Then, first, we'll just set it on slow. And make sure it's plugged, okay? Don't forget, before setting it on any speed. Okay. So set it to number one, low speed. So we just need to wait until um, the wet ingredients or the liquid and the flour or the dry. So we just need to set it on low speed and wait until it's incorporated. So once you see that uh, the dough is already forming, it's like a ball. So we will now set it into medium speed. Okay, and we'll have to wait for around 15 minutes and see you again after 15 minutes. So guys, here we will see the dough is already formed and sticky so what we would do next is using our handy dandy spatula by the way uh shout out to miniso for spawn no this is not sponsored shout out to miniso thank you for our marvel uh what you call this apron marvel apron yeah So, scrape all the dough from the hook. So, by the way guys, don't do this. I mean, don't talk while you're preparing the food. Because your saliva might get into the food. This is only done by professionals. Professional! <laughs> okay. Uh, make sure you get every last bits of it. Because... It's important for let's have a bite if you leave it there. Okay, then after that, we'll just need to scrape it a little bit and form it into a um, circular shape. Well, not actually perfect circle, ball, sp sphere. And we'll just scrape out the sides and we will just leave this out for to, to rest for about an hour. So there you go. So cover it with clean cloth and rest it for about an hour. 
So, see you again after an hour. Welcome back, guys. After an hour, so we will see our dough looks something like this. So, I think it doubled in size. So, that's our target. We should double the size of the dough. Okay. So, what we'll need is... Uh, by the way, guys, sorry, I didn't mention a while ago. Um, this this uh, recipe makes two large size pizza so uh, next we'll do we will portion it into two pieces so first uh, make sure to uh, flower your surface area or work area and so same as your hands so make sure your hands are clean before <laughs> touching any food related items so flower then uh, transfer transfer the dough from the bowl into your work table so scrape off scrape off all the remaining dough <laughs> so well this is a bit messy guys so be prepared for your hands to be sticky okay so there you go So first is we would make it into a ball. So again, flower the surface of the dough so that it won't be sticking too much to your hands. So for the those who are experts out there, please comment on the comment section if I'm doing something that's not right. <laughs> So guys, take note, I'm not a professional. Okay, then flower again. If, if you feel that um, the dough is sticking to your hands, um, gently flower it again. Flower it again. So, so that you won't be having a hard time handling, handling the dough. So, yep. Turn it into bowl, just gently roll it a bit, so flower again since it's sticking on my hands. Yeah, so I told you this guys, it's sticking. So not enough flour, so so that that should be i think that should be enough so we'll use our uh dough cutter and cut it in half okay then make sure to flower again flower and flower and flower Okay, then turn it again into a ball. So, let's get this out of my hands. And flour it again. sure to get all the remaining dough so make it into a ball
but it shouldn't be a perfect ball so that one just would just be fine then uh, grab your you can put this in a bowl uh, two separate bowls uh, and we will rest it again in in, a, in the refrigerator so for me what I'm doing is I'm wrapping it up in a cling wrap so I'll just get the cling wrap so we'll just wrap it on a cling wrap I'm really bad at handling this cling wrap so bear with me guys grab this one portion and put it in then cut your king wrap there you go so cover it up okay so yep this should be good then the other one grab another piece yeah if you're a little bit oc <laughs> you could use uh, a digital weighing scale so that your dough would be <laughs> would be the same size would have the same size so get this down you go then cut your cling wrap and wrap it up okay so here we have two separate portion then again We'll rest it inside the refrigerator for an hour. Sana oil may rest. So, see you again after an hour. So guys, here is our dough. It puffed. <laughs> so it's a bit chunkier now. So after resting an hour in the refrigerator. So with our toppings, we will use tomato sauce. Um, we only use tomato sauce because this is the only available in our kitchen um, but you could grab your favorite uh, pizza sauce on your favorite supermarket okay the next is bacon then uh, store-bought cheese this is cheddar and mozzarella so it's pre-shredded uh, we just cut it into smaller pieces so okay first uh, flour Flour the pan, so we don't have a baking pa uh, pizza pan, so we're just will be using a baking pan. So flour it up. So make sure, just to make sure that the dough won't stick at the bottom. So don't be scared. Everything's fine. Then flour your hands. Make sure it's well floured, cause for sure if it's not it it would stick to your uh the, the dough would stick to your hands okay so grab your dough remove the cling wrap and put it on your tray okay so i mentioned a while ago uh by using um rolling pin so actually i don't really like using rolling pin when doing pizzas so i just use my hands and fingers to push push down or flatten the, the dough okay so okay don't forget to flour it the, the top 
of the dough so that it won't stick to your hands okay so push it down push so then start forming your circle or I think in our case hopefully we could make a circle if not this this would look like an oval okay so if you feel that um, the dough is sticking so add a couple more flour I mean dashes of flour on the dough so flour your dough and your fingers Okay, so just push it down, push it down. So, make sure, uh, I really like my pizza thin so that it would be crispy. So, just stretch it out. So, if you can, you could um, do the, well, I can't do it. Because <laughs> it's a bit uh, sticky. But, you could use your... Uh, knuckles to um, push down the pizza but yeah I, I I like my fingers more because I have more control over the output or the shape of the pizza okay so push it down make sure it's evenly flattened so if if the middle is more um, bumpy so push just push it towards the sides see so that the dough would be perfectly well not 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 actually perfectly perfectly thin or not so perfectly thin Yeah, so just push, push, and push. So yeah, I think we're turning into in an oval now, because <laughs> there's the the dough still is thick, since I wanted it to be thin, thin crust. So and I also don't like the crust, the the thick thick crust. So, let's push it, push it baby. So, uh, let's make it into a more equally flattened pizza. So, well, actually, this looks more of like a flat bread <laughs> instead of a pizza. But for me, I would still call this pizza. Or pizza flat bread. We can call that the pizza flat. Okay? So, after flattening it up, we'll get our tomato sauce. Tomato sauce. Tomato sauce. Okay? Just put it in the middle. Then use the back of the ladle to spread it out. Okay. Not too thick, not too thick though. So make sure to put on, on all sides and all surface. Yeah, I'm really not good at this. So please bear with me. Uh, okay, so let's just finish up all our tomato sauce. And then we will be putting our toppings, the cheese and um, bacon. So 
yeah, spring color cheese. Make sure to um, have more, uh, I mean, enough cheese for the toppings because um, this uh, our topping would be cheese, then bacon, then cheese. Okay, so now we'll put our meat, the bacon. So just spread it, put it there. Don't be scared. It's okay. Everything's fine. As long as by the end of the day, we're all happy because we have a good slice of pizza. Okay? Just spread it evenly. Make sure that every corner has a bacon okay so yeah this is bacon overload by the way so there okay just put on every single corner okay so I'm running out of words, guys. <laughs> so, uh, comment down below what's your favorite uh, pizza flavor or your favorite pizza place. Yeah, for me, I think I really like Yellow Cub. Um, the flavor is perfect. Not too thick, not too thin. There's a lot of flavors, so yeah, and I really like their uh, wings, the sriracha, sriracha wings. Okay, so next would be the cheese, another cheese on top. Okay, just sprinkle it around. Okay, sprinkle it around. Okay, so here's the pizza before we put it into the oven. So we will bake it in the oven for 10 minutes around 550 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's see it after it's been cooked. So here you go guys, our finished product, the bacon and cheese pizza, yo!